This video is just a short extract from the entire course. If you wish to see all of the videos from this series at higher quality and in far larger screen size, head over to ifskills.com. We've got our photos and we want to see kind of what we can do here. In the template browser, you got a lot of stuff. You have an HTML gallery default. Something you want to remember here, if you're not like a, a web designer geek, is that some things will work depending on your audience and some things won't work. Flash is not, for example, as compatible with everybody as say an HTML gallery. And that's up to you. But we can click over here. You've got Earl Grey, which is a T, one of my favorite T's. Interesting names that they come up with. Let's come over here though. Let's start with layout style. There are some kind of fun things up here. You've got an airtight, airtight, and airtight. There's three of those. You've got airtight auto viewer. I do like this one. Nice, big images. You come into it and you can click the button to go to the next one, to go to the next one. That's kind of cool. This one's fun. Airtight postcard viewer. Check this out. Kind of distributes the images almost like postcards. You've got the airtight simple viewer, which is actually a nice one. And then you've got Lightroom Flash Gallery and HTML Gallery. Let's go back to something like Earl Grey for now. You can also find more galleries right over here. And as this program evolves, there's more and more stuff out there. Let's close layout styles and get into site info. Now in site info and understand depending on your layout, you're going to see different things over here. We have a site title and we could call that And we can change the collection title, My Photographs. Let's call that Flowers of Spring. Be careful on one thing. This is kind of like an aside. Make sure you're spelling the words correctly because it's not going to look good if they're misspelled. Down here, I don't really want this, so I'm going to actually delete that. And we've got contact information, and that would be Andy Anderson. Now for the link, I'm going to strip off the word user at domain and type in my email. Make sure you leave the mail to and the colon there or it's not going to work. Let's go ahead and close that up. Go into color palette. We do have the ability to make some changes here. For example, the text, if you don't like it as white, you could click here and choose a different color. And we could go into menu text or header text or the menu, the background. Maybe you don't like the background or you don't like the border. You can really make changes to the colors here any way you want, but make sure the colors kind of reflect what you're trying to say too. Let's go ahead and close that out. Appearance. Now in appearance, we could do things like an identity plate. So say for example, that this is nice, but I can't really change it that much. The font is kind of locked in for me and I would rather have something else up there. So I'm going to select Identity Plate. And then I'm going to go in here and I'm going to select Photography by AA. And you can see it changes. Now I made that. If we go here, go into Edit. I made it right here. You can make as many of these as you want and go ahead and save them. If you don't like just the straight text, you can do that. We can change the image sizes over here. Say large, medium small, whatever you want to do. You always come back and change it. Over here on thumbnail images, maybe those are too big. So I can go to medium and it'll re-render it and make them smaller. You say, well, no, actually those are fine the way they work. And so we'll take that back to large. The nice thing again about this is non-destructive. No matter what you do, you can always change your mind. Let's go ahead and get out of appearance and go into image info. This is metadata that is put in the images in the library module. Things like titles and captions. If you want them, you've got them. But you can also click here and change it to something else. But remember, this is metadata that we talked about in the library module that will be added to the image if you want to. Now, I don't have either one, so I'm gonna go ahead and turn those off. Output settings. What do you want your images in terms of quality? Quality is important in the fact that the higher the quality, the better the image, the longer the load. Now we have an eight second rule. In other words, we have very little patience. 70 is actually a pretty good number. That's the default. 
If for whatever reason you feel the images don't have the quality you want as you're looking at them, you can raise or lower that number. What kind of metadata do you want? Typically copyright only is going to be fine here. You can put on a watermark if you want to. So let's go in and maybe use my AA copyright proportional. This would be useful if you're working with a client that you want them to see the images, but you don't want necessarily for them to get the images yet. And these are web images, I understand that. But they will basically change, and you'll see the copyright come back and forth. Now I'm going to turn that off. I don't want that. In sharpening, basically we're saying to the computer, the images need to look a little bit sharper on the screen. Now standard usually is probably what you're going to use in most cases. However, you do have low or high. They do change the image. They do make it look more contrasty. So that's up to you. I would suggest probably in most cases you're going to want to experiment and see what you like. If you don't, you can always come back and change it. The upload settings down here, we're going to talk about in the next chapter. Because they're about getting this thing ready for prime time. So, on to the next.